Good evening and welcome to Chasing the Facts. I'm your host Sam Chase and with us for this particular show is Virginia Crocker Timmons who is the current chair of our select board. I got it right. <laughs> Folks, really, I've, I've really worked on this. <laughs> you know, I haven't made too many mistakes. It's the select board. And Virginia is a candidate for re-election uh, to the select board. Uh, and uh, as th those of you who have been following the show know that I've had the other two candidates on and now it's Virginia's turn and so we're going to have a conversation with her about uh, her role, what she has done on the board and, and uh, why she is seeking re-election. But before we do that, <clears throat> Virginia, I think you know that what we usually do to start off the show is we just ask our guests to give us a little bit of a, a brief uh, biography just to introduce yourself to the audience if they don't already know who you are, which I'm sure most do, but go ahead. <laughs> sure. Um, <clears throat> I actually grew up in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, and uh, that's where I met my high school prom date, who's now my husband, and we moved to Chelmsford uh, 25 years ago. Wow. We raised our son here. Um, You're still a blow-in, though. I'm still a blow-in. Yep, mm -hmm. <laughs> yep mm -hmm. I am. <laughs> Uh, my education is in engineering. I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in engineering. Um, I'm currently a certified business and executive coach, so I work one-on-one -on -one with individuals or with organizations in areas like leadership development, strategic and tactical planning, um, and process. And I also spent uh, 28 years in the defense industry where I had about 10 years in middle management and 12 years in executive management positions. So in my professional career over the last 35 years, I've really worked um, the gamut from large corporations to small entrepreneurial environments. Um, in terms of my spare time outside of the select board role, I do a lot for the Greater Lowell Chamber of Commerce. I'm a member there and I volunteer once, sometimes twice a month, facilitating different forums for them or giving talks on areas of interest that um, for the businesses that they support. And I am also on the board of directors of the Lowell Transitional Living Center, uh, which I've done for several years. I had to take a leave due to a personal uh, situation, but um, I've recently re-engaged with them and I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled. It's something that's near and dear to my heart. So, mm. And then, uh, as you said, I've, I've been a first-term select board member. Um, I've been a town meeting rep for three years, and I was also on the Route 40 study committee in town. So you ran, uh, that's a pretty extensive background, and I think that brings a lot to the table for the town, uh, especially your experience in um, um, the administrative areas and dealing with, uh, you, you've obviously dealt with a lot of uh, well, we used to say personnel, now we say HR. You've also you've, you've <laughs> yeah. dealt with a lot of those issues. So that, that's very helpful. That's a good, good background to bring uh, to the select board, I think. So you first ran in 2019. So mm -hmm. why did you run three years ago? What prompted you to run for office at that point? Um, I had always thought about doing public service, and um, my personal situation at the time, was that I was um, working full-time, traveling five to six days a week, and it was never something that I could take on. And um, around the same time that I wound up on the Route 40 study committee, it was probably like three years before that, I had left my corporate career to start my own coaching practice, so I had a lot more flexibility with how I spent my time. And as I got involved in the study committee and um, learned a lot more about how municipal government worked, uh, that's where I decided I wanted to jump in and, and make a contribution. Um, so I ran for select board, and I have never looked back. I've really loved doing it. Oh, well, that's good. Now, uh, during the course, you've been there now almost three years, so has, that, has the experience matched or mismatched uh, your expectation when you ran? <laughs> um, when I ran, I really tried to enter it with an open mind without a lot of preset expectations. Mm -hmm. I knew it was going to be work. <laughs> um, and I think I've said this to you before, Sam, when we've been here, that 
I didn't, I didn't have an appreciation for how much of a part-time volunteer job would feel like a full-time commitment at times. Um, so I think that um, that was something that I really learned the commitment that's involved and, and that, that we need to provide when we're on the board. Um, I think just from an environment standpoint, the other thing that none of us really expected during my first term was COVID. Mm. You know, and so I, I came into my first year, uh, I guess, with kind of like how things are traditionally done with the town government and with the select board, and then COVID hit in my second year. And I, um, I just, I, I think our town employees really stepped up to the plate in both in town hall and in the school system, and there were just a lot of adjustments that had to be made and different things on the board's plate, including now, you know, looking at some of the COVID relief funds. Mm -hmm. So that was something I don't think anybody really anticipated, and there wasn't, you know, any um, historical learning or anything like that that anybody really brought to, brought to the board. We were all kind of going through it together. So As, that interesting. Yeah, that's a very good point, and, and of course I think that applies to just about everything. I yep, mean, this is a situation absolutely. that happens once every hundred years, Yeah. hopefully not more than that, and we're all flying by the seat of our pants every day. And yep. I think we have to keep that in mind and, and uh, put that in, into that context when ultimately we, because we're humans and this is what we do after the fact, we like to make judgments, but I think we have to you know, keep that in perspective. That's a very good point. And I agree with you. I think the town managed very well mm -hmm. um, during that entire period. If you look at what other municipalities were doing or not doing, um, I think Chelmsford came out pretty well. I think it came out strong. I so think. that's good. So that uh, that's that's a very good point. So um, I think you may have already answered the question, but I'll ask it again anyway. Sure. So you are seeking a second term, and some people would look at you and say, "Are you out of your mind?" <laughs> Uh, or, gee, thanks a lot. Uh, so why do you want a second term on the board? Um, first of all, the, the first term that I have served um, honestly has been one of the greatest privileges of my life. Um, I have so much enjoyed being part of something that is bigger than myself, and I think that the select board is one area where um, it is, it's always bigger than yourself, and it's about the town and the community. And the main reason why I want to run again is because I think that we, the board's accomplished a lot in the last three years, and I personally have been involved in some initiatives, and I just feel like I'm not done yet. Um, there's more that I want to do, mm -hmm. so. So, and that's, uh, I think that's good. I mean, yeah. it's, it sounds like you're, running again for the right reason. And so uh, I think that's, uh, that's a very uh, a laudable um, um, goal to have. So <clears throat> when you say there are other things that you want to do in a second term going forward, um, obviously you're totally familiar with the way the uh, town government is structured. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have the charter that lays it out. We have the administrative uh, town side. We have the select board, which really acts as the executive board of the town. So uh, in order to manage the town, we have to have a cooperation uh, between the select board, the town manager, um, other boards that are elected that have um, jurisdictional uh, authority in other areas that the board doesn't yeah. have, and also the town meeting. So how do you feel as a, as, a, as a resident and as a select person, how do you feel about the current way that the town is structured, the way we have to operate under the charter. Do you have any thoughts on that? More from a philosophical standpoint, I think I'm asking you. The way that we have to operate? Yeah, so in other words, in, in a small town, for mm -hmm. example, you don't have a town manager. You have an executive secretary. Or in a real small town, you don't even have that. The select board runs the town, manages the operation. We don't do that in Chelmsford. Mm -hmm. and, and the larger, you know, once you hit eight or nine thousand people that's an impractical situation right. so we don't do that so so we've uh, brought in a profession so you have you have a town manager uh, as a lot of towns do and it's a uh, we call that a strong town manager form of government mm -hmm. where he is the executive 
CEO type of person. So are you comfortable with that structure? Do you think, do you see that that's okay for Chelmsford? Uh, would you, would you think that, uh, are, are you thinking that maybe changes need to be made? I'd just like to get a little bit of an idea of how you feel about how we're currently structured. And does that serve the town well? Are there ways that we can improve? You know, that kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, I, I've heard, you know, people have put forward, should we, should we have an elected mayor, for example? Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't know that I've thought any, that through in that level of depth. When I look at the charter and the select board policies, um, the messaging that is always around it is the board is responsible for policy, mm -hmm. the town manager is responsible for day-to-day -day execution, which is absolutely true. However, if you read the charter in its entirety, including like section four, and you also take into consideration the select board policy document for the town, the town manager is also responsible to the board for the performance of those day-to-day -day duties. Obviously. And is yes. responsible to the board. Uh, the, the select board and the town manager are responsible for setting goals together for the mm -hmm. town each year and are responsible for the um, execution of those goals. And so what I think um, maybe hasn't served us well is the messaging or the hard lines that we draw sometimes in our mind between policy and execution because I don't think that it is that hard of a line. The town, the town manager is responsible to the board for the daily execution and the board and the town manager are responsible together for executing the goals that are set annually. Mm -hmm. And so I think when we can kind of shift our mindset a little bit around that, then it makes for a more collaborative environment where we can bring different talents to the table in order to get things done for the town. Um, I, does that make sense to you? It makes perfect sense to me okay. because I read the charter the same way. That's the way I read the charter. Okay. And the same way policy and execution no, the, or the way, way you, I said? The way you okay. described it. I mean, uh, obviously, um, and this is just, you know, since you asked me, I'm going to answer the question, even though I'm supposed to be interviewing you. Um, I feel it should be a collaborative situation um, to the extent uh, that that you do that, that you have those discussions and that you yeah. set the goals and so forth. Um, and I agree with you that uh, the lines do get blurred sometimes, and sometimes it's because of the personalities. Uh, when I was on the board, we had a town manager that was um, um, very much interested in, in uh, not having that kind of collaboration with the select board. So, I mean, you know, you go, you go through these these uh, situations. So, well, and I, I'm sorry. The, I didn't oh, go ahead. Me. And so I, I agree that that's, but again, a lot of it also, a lot of it relates to the personalities that are involved. Some people are able to handle that, others are not. Mm -hmm. And so if you're, if you're in that executive leadership role with the board, especially if you're the chair, um, it's a difficult it's a difficult thing to navigate sometimes because you are dealing with individual personalities and you know people have their own ideas of how things ought to be done you know that kind of thing and it's 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 tough and you're right the messaging isn't always isn't always clear so. and I you know I, I think it's unrealistic for a volunteer board to get involved in the day-to-day -day operations and they shouldn't mm -hmm. but at the top level you know we need to collaborate and work together and then you brought up other boards and committees mm -hmm. Um, so we have our liaison assignments, mm -hmm. as you know, but one thing that I think has been good about um, the board in the last three years, which is really the, the experience base I have with it, is I have seen them reach out to other boards and committees where it's wholly relevant to do so and mm -hmm. to make sure that those stakeholders are involved. So for example, when we had to do the um, development agreement for the UMass West Campus, we didn't do that with blinders on, absent of mm -hmm. what the planning board was doing with the zoning overlay. When we were looking at the parking in Center Village and we had some requests from um, different from businesses could you make some 15 minute parking if somebody wants to run in and get a coffee and mm -hmm. could we put a, a handicapped accessible spot street side we brought in center village committee to help us you know um, weigh in on that 
And, you know, I think um, last night at our select board meeting, we talked about one of the goals that we had set to look at in the fourth quarter about um, not getting, not stepping on what the historic district commission and the central center village committee do and others, but are there ways that we can enhance the town center so that, um, you know, when there's an event in, in the town center and the, somebody's performing on the stage, you can hear them better. That was the original impetus behind that mm -hmm. that board member Woe just brought forward. And then that turned into, well, could we do things with, you know, treescapes and things like that to just make it a more welcoming or more vibrant environment. And so that's a case where we're going to bring in the, um, the historic mm -hmm. commission, the center village committee, maybe the tree committee. And so I think it's really important that um, our boards and committees lean across the committee lines as much as they can. And I know that's difficult because we're all volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you make a great point there. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a tough thing. The charter is, is uh, written in such a way that it does make the select board's job more difficult to be managers because it does require a level of communication and collaboration which not everybody is comfortable with mm -hmm. and uh, but that's the that's that's the roadmap and that's what you have to follow at least it, you have to try to follow it yeah and and I think when we draw that hard line between policy and execution too that it becomes disempowering like for everyone and that's not I don't think that's in the best interest of the well, town. Well frustrating you know yep. again if you have a board member or two or a town manager who has a very strong opinion on the way something ought to be done, yep. then that, that can be problematic. And you know, and you're never going to get a situation where everybody agrees, but um, you, you know, you have to have a situation where people are willing to sit down and talk. Yes. And if uh, my father always said, you can't learn anything if you're talking, so you have to listen too. All right. You have two ears and one mouth. Yeah, it, that, I like that. <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. So anyway, uh, I th that's good. Uh, I think it's important to get your philosophy out in front of the voters. So I'm glad uh, you know we're having this conversation. Um, it's no secret that uh, over the last couple of years that things haven't gone as well as they might have with the board and the town manager. So um, is that situation progressing? Uh, uh, I know you probably can't talk a lot about that, but I mean, can you give the folks an indication of how that, the direction that that may be going in. Um, so, and I've said this before, um, I spoke with council and I don't feel that it's appropriate for a current board member to get out ahead of the board on a future appraisal mm -hmm. or contract discussions that have been in executive session. What I will say is that I think some of the matters that, um, caused the majority of the board to lose confidence or to, or to just take pause are things that are going to take time to work through and that's what that's what we've been doing. But you are working through them. Well we brought in an outside facilitator mm -hmm. for example to help us look at working relationships between board members and with the town manager. Um, there are some other things I can't get into here Understood. but I, I I don't think it's the type of thing where there's an event that's going to occur and it's fixed or, you know, we check a box and it's fixed. I think that it's it's taking some time and um, I feel it's important to take the time necessary. Mm -hmm. I, that, 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 that's a fair answer and I appreciate, uh, I appreciate that and I think, because uh, I think most people who are interested in the continued successful operation of the town, the viability. I mean, we have an investment here, uh, and um, I think that's a reasonable expectation that the board would, would take that initiative and to try to do what you're saying. So mm -hmm. that, that, I think that's, uh, that's good. So um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of the overall, and I'm not focusing specifically on the town manager, I think you've alluded to it uh, already, Overall, from just an impressionistic point of view, 30,000 feet, you look down on Chelmsford over the last five or six, seven years, and maybe you compare it and contrast it with some of the towns around us. How do you think we're doing overall as a town? Are you, are you somewhat, at least somewhat satisfied with the progress that we've made or, or the way things are done? Uh, how do you think we sit as a town, uh, comparatively speaking? Um, 
I think I think we've been doing reasonably well. Mm -hmm. um, I think that like our school systems under Jay Lang's leadership mm -hmm. is, have um, uh, we have great school systems and they have almost you know sixty seven million dollars of our annual budget so um, I think that's really managed well and uh, we have terrific school systems I think the town operations um, have been for the most part um, managed okay but I think that there's we can do better. I think there's room for improvement. And um, I think that we have to continue to stretch ourselves in different ways of thinking, whether it's how we're allocating funding. We, we've got challenges ahead of us that we've never had before. Keep right? going, because I was, so, that was going to be my next question. Okay, well, so, you know, for, for example, yep. um, you know, hindsight is always wonderful, right? But mm -hmm. Um, I look at something like the sewer, which I think is a major challenge ahead of us. And some of that's going to take time because capacity isn't mm -hmm. wholly within our control. But um, we've spent a fair amount of money on the sewer system in the last year that we, the, the system we have just with failures. So, you know, we went into six fi figures on the first pump station failure um, with, with Southwell. Mm. And uh, we had a recommendation in 2010 to look at things like uh, camera diagnostics that can be done and, and so that you can plan what type of maintenance might you have to be mm -hmm. doing in the out years. And I don't, I don't know what the decision process was back then, but for whatever reason we haven't done that and we've got more failures on our mm -hmm. hands right now. And we, had, we allocated 1.4 million of our ARPA funding, our COVID relief funding, to sewer repairs and these diagnostics going forward. And we don't know, and you know, Paul Cohen said this last night too, we don't, we don't know what's ahead of us in terms of maintaining the sewer system. So will we have enough, will because we have enough? You're at the age now where things are gonna start oh, to fall apart. Oh, sure, so, right. so, and that's, that's a challenge that we haven't right. had in front of us, and so how are we, you know, depending on what that initial diagnostic says, mm -hmm. How are we going to set ourselves up to fund that, and can we even do that through our sewer enterprise fund, mm. right? Because, um, and, and that's going to be on the taxpayer too, if that's right. how we have to do it. So, I think that there's, we're going to have to start thinking a little differently. I'm on the, I'm on the fire station study committee, and um, one of the things that that committee is wrestling with right now is not just what do we do with our fire stations, but um, how do we ensure the safety of the community in terms of mm -hmm. response times, but also of our firefighters? Because we haven't been able to staff our fire department um, to the national standard. And no, no, very few communities do, exactly. but, but ours is, is below what many communities. Which is why we have mutual aid, right. Which, yeah. which is below what many communities mm -hmm. do. So I think there's just, um, there's a lot of challenges ahead of us that I think we, we're going to have to, we, we can't just keep thinking the same way we've always thought because mm -hmm. we have um, limited local resources and we certainly have limited state resources. And I think that's probably another area, you know, we've talked about even at the board meetings that um, maybe it, next year we have to set a goal to get more concerted in our efforts with our state and federal legislators. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a hard sell with the community. It's uh, very hard I've been, sell. I've been in, you've been in town 25 years. I've been here 43 years. Yeah. And it's a hard sell in Chelmsford. I mean, there are towns around us. They pass overrides every two or three years. That is not happening in this no, town no. ever. Okay. So, I, <laughs> so, so you, so you have to manage within that environment. It's very, very difficult. And it's and hard I, to convince I think, people. I think we're going to have some very but, different types of choices we have to I, make going I agree forward. With you. So. Uh, I think you've given some good examples there. So obviously, the cost of government always increases. It never decreases, and, and mm -hmm. there, there are reasons for that that I think we, we all know. 80% uh, of our cost structure is, is service, it's salaries, okay? And, um, you know, we have to deal with contracts and things like that. So a lot of that stuff is, is very hard to manage. In terms of any kind of stabilization with our taxes, I mean, is that even a possibility? I mean, all politicians, and I'm not 
focusing on you, but everybody likes to say, well, we have to stabilize the tax rate or taxes. I mean, what realistically can we do as a town? Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, <clears throat> I agree with you. I don't, I don't think taxes are ever going to go down or, or become flat. <laughs> um, and, and the reason I say that is the cost the cost of doing business is going to keep mm -hmm. rising with inflation, with the community needs. And we have very limited external funding from the state. Um, our employees pulled in like over $500,000 in grant funding last year, which I think is terrific. But it, I'd, it, I'd like to see that get some publicity. Yeah, absolutely. You know. um, and, I, and I think that things like Chapter 70, Chapter 90 funding, mm -hmm. where we've had um, either no or very small increases. We can't depend on that um, unless we think we can go influence the legislature more. And so that leaves, when we're, when we're funding, uh, when our budgets are above the 2.5% tax levy, right, the rest of that is funded through other local revenue, right. meals taxes, development fees, things like that. And um, Going back to your question on the taxes, I think that what we really need to do is come up with a, what is our approach for taxes? And decide, are, are we going to go back to a one-to-one -one You're talking about the levy? split, right, the classification. Right, right, right. the classification mm -hmm. part. Are we going to go back to a one-to-one? -one? Are we going to maintain some certain residential factor? But I think people need to know, and that's the stability factor, mm -hmm. right? Not making a decision every November based on how, how we're feeling <laughs> at any particular time. And I think we really need to have some type of deliberate approach that the board defines for our tax strategy. And that's why last November, I, I, I suggested that maybe we have that discussion in the spring or the summer before we're in the heat of the moment mm -hmm. in November. Um, but I think too that if you look at kind of where that gap is filling, I mean, when my husband and I moved to Chelmsford, one of the reasons we picked Chelmsford was because it was all built out. And, <laughs> and I'll tell you. Little uh, did you know. Little did I know, <laughs> right. But, but, but the fact is no. now, I mean, there's probably not a lot, of new hopeful, a lot of new development in Chelmsford's future because there isn't a lot of places to put it's it. It's redevelopment. Because it's the, redevelopment, the exactly. Right. And it's, it's maybe revitalizing, mm -hmm. continuing what Lisa's doing with the 129 corridor. Right. Um, so it, it, I think the challenge is really getting a handle on where were we dependent on money beyond the tax levy <laughs> mm -hmm. and how can we um, potentially increase our external revenue sources and what are we really projecting in terms of development and how much is that really going to help fill the gap. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's, that's a, that is a correct analysis because we're getting almost 80% of our uh, budgetary revenue through the property tax, right. which also obviously includes personal uh, property tax as well. And I think the second biggest category is automobile excise tax. So that's, that's fairly stable, but then you've got, uh, you've got about a 15% gap there, and I think that's probably very accurate. So, well, that's good that we sort of uh, came around to talking about taxes, which is everybody's favorite subject because nobody <laughs> wants to pay them, you know, but uh, it's, the, uh, it's the price of uh, doing uh, business in the town. Yeah. And I think that, uh, and I, I, I'm somebody who's actually in a position to see what other towns do, and, I, and, I, and I'm telling you folks, we get a good bang for our buck in Chelmsford. We really do. When you, when you take a look at other towns and the percentage to which their budgets are funded by the state, we have to do 80% on our property tax. I think we do a good job. So it's good that we end on taxes. Uh, I wish we had more time, Virginia. The half hour goes quickly. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to, um, or a few seconds, I should say, to take a, a look into the camera and uh, ask the Chelmsford voters for the vote. And maybe you can remind them when the election is and uh, about the precinct splits. Sure. <clears throat> So um, again, it's been my honor to serve in the first term, and I respectfully ask for one of your two votes on April 5th. Uh, please keep in mind that our, we have uh, 11 precincts now, and your voting locations may have changed. So um, keep an eye on the town clerk's website, and I believe there's also a mailing coming out.
Thank you. Yes, and that's uh, that's absolutely correct. So um, very easy to find that information on the website. So thank you very much, Virginia, for thank coming, you. and good luck uh, in the election. Thank you very much.